Hey everyone, welcome to TripAdvisor. It's Tuesday today, so it's time for another Tabletop Tuesday video tutorial. Uh, continuing on in our Around the World uh, travel theme series, looking at another uh, sort of travel theme game. Today we're looking at this little small box roll and write game called Railroad Inc. So as always, uh, you can pull up a chair, join me at the table. We'll unbox it, take it to the table, I'll walk through it, and then I'll give you some final thoughts and my report card for Railroad Inc. All right, here is all the components of Railroad Inc. outside the box. Quickly run through the components and a very simple setup. And we'll sort of zoom in on the game board on the table. And I'm going to play a solitaire one player version start to finish. It's not a long game. It says 30 minutes. Certainly a one player game you can play in you know, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so basically you've got six player boards here. And I'll walk through that shortly on the table. Of which all the writing is going to happen. You've got six corresponding uh, erasable uh, sort of fine tip black markers here. Uh, you've got a set of four dice, and each round these dice will be rolled. And on these dice, it's a combination of symbols. They're either sort of railroad tracks or road symbols. And you'll be rolling those and writing appropriately, uh, choosing where you want to extend your roads and railroads on your player board. Of course, it comes with a rule book. Really like the rule book in this game. Very visual, walks through things, quite simple to learn. Uh, there is an extra set of four dice in this game. And I should say, if you're looking to purchase this game there is a blue box version and a red box version uh, each of them have different colored dice you can add to add sort of variations to the game I'll just be sim uh, simply walking through the base game today and I'll let you learn those on their own you can explore that so just if, you, if you're curious why there are two different box covers there's slightly different variations but the nuts and bolts of each version are essentially the same game so that's all the components let's get the game on the table and I'll show you how it plays start to finish Okay, here's Railroad Inc. on the table, setting up for a solitaire one-player game today. I'm just using the box insert to roll the dice in so they don't go flying. Uh, so I got my four dice, I got my game board, I've got my erasable marker here. Let me just walk through the basic flow and some of the rules for the game before I do a full playthrough today. Basically, you've got to your player board here, which is a 7x7 seven seven grid, and you've got 12 exits, symbolized by the red arrows around the perimeter of the board. Uh, note that some of the exits are um, roads, and some of them are railroad tracks. And you're going to be rolling the four dice uh, every round. So, for example, if these are the dice that are rolled, I have to draw these particular uh, symbols and combination of roads and railroad tracks somewhere on my player board. Uh, the restrictions for drawing them, they need to connect to uh, a like symbol. And so I can't start any of my networks anywhere in the middle of the board. If I wanted, for example, to draw this uh, straight road, I could draw it simply coming up like this. I could draw it coming up from the bottom of the board there. Sorry, it's a little crooked. I'm not much of an artist, but you get the point there. So that would be a legal move. I can't draw that somewhere in the middle of the board because it would be disconnected from an existing network or exit. Um, so that's how that works. Let me just talk about the scoring. Uh, we'll sort of play the game with the end goal in mind. Uh, so here's uh, basically the scoring grid. The various ways you score points is outlined here on top of your player board. Uh, again, there are numerous ways to score points. Uh, typically the majority of your points are the biggest piece of the pie, certainly by scoring points, is typically going to be how many networks are connected to how many different exits. And so here it outlines the scoring uh, with the little red arrow here. So if I have a network, and a network means it's a continuous track or road or combination of that connects from to all the, all the different exits or various exits. Uh, the more exits that are connected to with one single network, the more points that you get. Of course, during the course of the game, you might have various networks and they will score points accordingly as well. Um, but the maximum is if you get, if you're able to, and this doesn't happen very often, but if you're able to connect all 12 of your exits in one network, uh, that's worth 45 points, as you can see there. Um, you need to have at least two, uh, two exits connected in your network to score any points, four, and then it goes up eight, 12, 16, it goes up in increments of four uh, from there. 
uh, except for the last one gives you a bonus of five from 40 to 45. And so the majority of your points are by connecting various networks to exits throughout the course of the game. You're also getting points here for your longest continuous road. So when I do the end game scoring, we will look at my longest continuous road on my board um, and that will score points, one point for each sort of square that has one part of that road continuing uh, throughout my networks. Likewise, longest continuous railroad is scored. Uh, this red box here, this red square is symbolic of this center area here, the three by three grid right in the center of the board. For every square that is occupied with a road or railroad or combination of, you score points as well. For those, one per square. Uh, the X, the reality is during the course of the game, at the end of the game, and the game is seven rounds, so you're going to have minimum 28 sort of squares filled on your board, probably more. I'll talk about these bonus ones in a, in a moment. But there's going to be some, ideally, you want to have as many interconnections as possible going to the various exits. But the reality is you will almost uh, definitely have a couple or more of just roads or railroads that sort of end, uh, they're open-ended. Anytime you have an open-ended, it's, it's viewed as a mistake and you're penalized one point for each of those. And so you're, you're adding up these four categories, subtracting the mistakes. The star is for the uh, variation, uh, the using the other dice, uh, some of the vari variable plays in the game. We're just gonna be doing the base game today, so you can disregard that for now. Add all those up, subtract the mistakes, and that's the total score. Uh, above that, you see two, four, six, eight, nine different uh, shapes, uh, different shapes of either roads or railroads. Uh, those signify the nine possible things that can be rolled throughout the course of the game. So you can keep an eye on that. Try and keep as many options open as possible as you're building and connecting your networks. And these uh, six ones here that are four-sided, these are your special ones. And you have the ability during the course of the game, you can play th up to a maximum of three out of these six throughout the game, but you can only use one maximum per round. Again, there are seven rounds. So if you desperately need one of these shapes to connect to continue your network, you're welcome to do so. Let's say, for example, I wanted to say in round four, I wanted to use this. I would simply exit off, signifying that I've used that and I can't reuse that the course of the game. It also reminds me I've used one out of the maximum of three of these I can use throughout the course of the game. So that's the rules and the restrictions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just simulate a full seven round one player game. So you'll get the feel. I'll try not to overthink my turns. There's a lot of options on what you can do, but just to give you an idea of the flow of the game and how it plays. So I'll simply start by rolling the four dice here. And uh, so you can see those four dice. Those are the four symbols I have to use. Again, I need to start at my exits. So, for example, maybe I want to uh, start by using this three-sided railroad. I can put it right here at the bottom coming up. So one going that direction and like that. So I'll take them out as I use them. And then possibly I want to, um, I can use this elbow somewhere, road elbow. So let's come, uh, oh, let's come up top here and just start this road here, maybe going this direction. I've got this one that's a road that turns into a railroad track. And so maybe I want to, uh, oh, maybe I wanna, let's turn this one here. So there's a station in the middle of that and it becomes an angled road. Again, I could swing this around and go a different orientation if I wanted to. And then finally, I've got a sort of an elbow shaped railroad. So let's keep on, let's head towards the center with that part here. I'll turn that up that direction. And the last thing you do, that would be the end of my round, unless I wanted to use a special, but uh, it's usually inadvisable to use these too early in the game. Remember, you got seven rounds, and once you use them, you can't reuse them, so I'll hold off on that. But what you do is you'll just mark number one on the little top right corner of each square, just to signify those were my four turns in round one. And that's one of seven rounds, as simple as that. If you're playing multiple players, everybody uses these. These are kind of community dice. So everybody would use uh, the four dice that are rolled. Once everybody signify that they're finished their turn, then another player, in this case, I'll re-roll these four dice. And same, same uh, situation, roll the four dice. 
and choose where I want to put those. So round two, I've got, you know, lots of rails here. Oh, maybe I want to try and connect this rail into my network. So I'll just draw that there. I'd like to get this involved. So this might be a good time to use this sort of road that turns to a railroad here. So maybe I'll, I'll bring that up and then I'll have it turn into a railroad, possibly connecting that later on. So I've used those two dice, leaving me two more. Well, maybe I want to turn this road back around, try again, try and get as much connected in the middle of the board as possible. So I'll swing that around there. And maybe I'll do likewise coming straight down from the top. Let's got a few more rounds to get things together. So I'll start branching off there. And again, that's all four, so I write my twos to signify that that is round number two. Again, I could use a special, but I'm going to hold off. I only get three of those in the course of the game, and there's no real urgency at this point. I'll keep my options open. I'll roll the dice and see where we head next. Okay. Some different symbols. So now I've got a... a this one's uh, unique. It's a, it's a bridge. So I want to just show you this one here. Um, basically, the railroad is going under the road. Uh, it does connect the railroad. So if you're scoring along this railroad, that would connect to what's on both sides. Along with some more railroads here. So I think this might be a perfect opportunity to use this three-way rail here. I can connect that over and I can come down and connect there. So now I've already got a network of two exits here. And we're going to get serenaded from some piano in the background today. My kids are doing their piano. So a little music while we build our networks here. Now, what do I want to do next? Um, I think... Yeah, I could put this curvy one right here, but then that's cutting off my ability to get up top there. Uh, I do want to continue that. If I put this here, then really that's that's as far as this railroad goes. And I want to have as lengthy a railroad as possible. So maybe we'll, uh, we'll take it up here. Maybe we'll just start another potential network or a way to tie in up here. That's that being used. Then I've got this... Got two more to use. I've got a straight rail and I've got, you know what? You can erase anytime you want. I'm seeing I've got this bridge. So maybe the bridge would be a good one to put here for a number of reasons. So let's do that instead. Just had a better idea come to mind here. So if I do that, that allows me um, to use this one right here now. I can connect that in like that and this straight rail I can put over here potentially connecting there it won't be a long railroad and it might just be a small network but if I have a small network there I can focus on connecting all of this down here so I think that's all four I've used this one this one this one and this one again the million dollar question is do i want to use a special and again i think you know i'm going to wait a little longer that's good for now we'll continue on this will be round four now okay so interesting there i've got two three-sided rails which opens up some interesting possibilities I think I want to use one of those here, potentially make this network a little longer. So let's do that. This is only round four. I've got some time. Of course, you don't want to have too many open ends. You'll run out of time to close up all the loops, but I've got a bit of time. So we're going to do that there. I'll put that back. I've used that. I've got another three-sided one. I've got a straight road and I've got a curved. Well, it makes sense to put the other three-sided one down here. That gets me 
going towards the center and connects and ties that in. So we'll put that one there. And that leaves me these two. What do I want to do with these two? Well, if I swing this around, that's not a bad option. Let's let's put that up there. Some dramatic music with that move. Maybe that's an ominous sign of things to come. But we'll take that out of the equation. That leaves me with a straight road. And maybe it's time to bring this one up here to try and connect. Again, I don't want to have too many open roads, but I've got three more rounds and I've got all my specials. Now the million dollar question is, do I want to use a special now or not? I think I'm still going to wait. I'm still going to wait. That leaves me three rounds. You don't have to use three, but they are certainly nice to hold, have in your back pocket, so to speak. So let me put my four moves for round four here. And four down, three to go. Here's round five. Okay, now I got a bunch of roads. A bunch of roads. That's interesting. Bunch of roads. What are we going to do here? What are we going to do here? Well, maybe what we'll do here is we're going to take this three sided road and put it here. That allows me to head to the middle. It also allows me to connect over there because. I've got an elbow. So let's use the elbow. Now that links into there. Now I'm working on a good size road and I'm getting up to the center. So that uses that one. I've got another elbow and I've got a road turning to a rail. Different things I could do here. But I'm wondering if I, if I use this elbow here. Let's try that. We'll use the elbow there. And then, what if I were to, oh, that's not going to work, that's the wrong direction. See, I was hoping to connect that up. That's all right, we'll use it somewhere else. Oh yeah, I can use it. Well, maybe I should turn this rail into a road. Do I want to do that? Oh, well, whatever. This might backfire, but the downside is that ends that railroad. But it gives me potential for maybe connecting these two roads together. So let's try that. Now there's a five, a five, a five, and a five. Now the million dollar question is I probably at this point want to use some sort of a special. Which special do I want to use? problem with putting one there is they're all four sided so that's going to be going nowhere I could put some probably want to put something up here so let's go with the just for fun let's go with three roads and a rail this one right here has three roads and a rail. So I'll cross that off. This is round five. I want to road this way. I want to road this way. I want to road this way. And I want to rail this way going over to that railroad. So let's see what that does. Only two more rounds here and a lot of ground to cover. So let's see what happens now in round six. Again, it's a bit of luck with getting the right dice. Trying to keep my options open as much as possible. And I've got two specials left. So this is round six. Interesting. A bunch of elbows. That's not necessarily what I wanted. Makes sense, though, to put the long straight rail here in the hopes that I can get a three-sided rail maybe next time. Okay, so we'll use that one. I could use my elbow there, but then I'm not connecting one of those two. So I'm going to leave that open until the last round, and hopefully I can get lucky with uh, this three-sided rail. Or at the very least, use a four-sider and just lose a point. Um, 
but I got a bunch of a bunch of roads here to deal with too. This is not looking good at all. Makes sense though to kind of bring this road around here. Running out of room there, so if I bring curve that around, I might be able to connect in next round. Then I've got a curved road. Huh, what do I want to do there? Or sorry, a curved rail. Curved rail. Well, maybe it's time to start coming from another exit. So let's put that one curving down this direction. And then um, different ways to play this, but let's, uh, oh, just for fun. This will probably won't work out as we hope, but let's put that curving this way. Oh, so that should be a road. Bring a road here. I'll try and get to the center with that. The challenge though is this is round six and we're running out of time. So I'll fill in my round six plays here. I have two more specials and I definitely want to use it. I think this is the time I want to use my four-sided road and I want to put it right smack in the middle of the board and hope for a bunch of roads next roll. Put it right there. Whoops, no station there. It's just roads. Excuse me. Put the eraser to work here. Four sided road there. And then we'll literally roll the dice. Problem is, I've used my other three sided roads, so I'm going to have to get lucky here at the end. And there is some luck involved, certainly. Okay, last round. Let's see what we can do here. Uh-oh, more rails and roads. We are in trouble. And that was my mistake this game. I didn't leave myself enough flexibility with railroads. I did, however, get this nice three-sided railroad. That's what I'm looking for here. So we'll, we'll close that off. That will help make the network bigger then yeah I have nothing I can put there that's unfortunate that's really gonna hurt in hindsight I should have put that middle one down there but that's all right you're getting a feel for how the game works here so um, I've used that Try and maximize my score here in the last round. Well, I think the best thing to do is to put this straight road here. And then I can... Uh, No, we're not going to do that. Not going to do that. We're going to put the road changing to a rail there. A little bit of thinking here. Put the road changing to a rail there. Then I can put this straight rail there because I have really nowhere else to build railroads. So I'll put the railroad there. Fills another middle spot. Then I've got this straight road. So again, it's it's awkward, but it fills another middle spot. And whether or not I extend this road or this road, maybe we'll just extend this here. It connects those. So there's, there would have been two minus points there. I might as well tie those together at least. Sadly, these are going to be going nowhere. And then I, I've got a special that I can put here. I've got one that is two sides road and two sides rail. And so if I, if I twist that around, I can put road and road. And that connects this at least. And it does give me a minus point there, but it fills another middle spot there. So 
I tried to maximize my points even though the dice roll wasn't as efficient as I had hoped it would be. So I think I've used, yeah, there's all the dice that have been used. I've used, again, I crossed that off. I've used all three of my specials. So that's the end of round seven there. And let me just uh, score this up very quickly. So the first thing I look at is how many networks do I have and how many X's are they connected to? Well, this is a case where I've got two networks. I wasn't able to tie this network in. So everything on the top of the board is a network and everything on the bottom of the board is network. So we'll call this network A and we'll call this network B. So in network A, I've got one, two, three, four exits that are connected all with one network. And so that'd be 12 points for network A. So I'll just write 12 there. For network B, I've got one, two, three, four, and it comes over here to a fifth exit. So I've got five. So that's a 16 points. So I've got 16 points for that one and 12 for that. So that's 28 points total for my network scoring. Then I look at my longest continuous road. Now, sadly, I was hoping to connect all of this as one road. So I look at which one is longer. So this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it makes no difference. So I pick one or the other um, and I would get seven points there. Longest railroad, I think is this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it continues down here, eight, nine so that would be a length of nine i think that's longer than this one one two three four five six seven eight yeah so nine for longest railroad track uh, i've used all of my middle sections except for this one so that would be eight out of a maximum of nine and let's see how many loose ends i didn't tie up i did pretty well with those so i've got a loose end here i've got a loose end here and I've got a loose end here. I think that's all of my loose ends. So I would lose three points. So I write minus three there. Total up the score. That's 35, 44, 52, 49 by my math is my final score. So that's basically how you play. Uh, that's a full playthrough, of course. If you have multiple players, you just pass out multiple boards, multiple markers. These dice are community dice. Everybody uses the same dice, and it's it's fun to compare at the end uh, and see how everybody designed their networks because certainly each one will be unique. So that's Railroad Inc. in a nutshell. Hope that gives you a, a good feel for the game start to finish. Let's go back up, and I'll give some of my final thoughts now. Okay, final thoughts time for Railroad Inc. First, let's talk about the theme. Uh, the theme of constructing railroad and uh, street networks on your board is, uh, it's a good theme. I think it draws you into the game. The reality is it's, it's sort of just an abstract strategy game. Um, but giving it that theme of sort of building a network or road construction, it works for me. It's not the most immersive or attractive theme in the world. Um, but I like it, and I'll give the theme a B. As far as the aesthetic value of the game, I hope you noticed during the course of the game uh, how easy the markers erase. I mean, I was using my finger, but they come with the eraser here. I worry sometimes with these games... Uh, that sometimes when you're writing on these, things are going to accidentally be erased during the course of the game, and that has happened. So you got to be careful you don't smudge your previous drawings during the course of the game. Um, but I, I like the look of the boards. They're not too flimsy. I like how they flip up. Not that you really need to keep a secret from the other players because they can't really impact what you're doing in the course of the game. Um, but everything is nicely packaged and put together. The rule book is really solid. I mentioned earlier it's uh, very visual, so it's pretty easy to get a handle on learning this game if you need to refer to the rule book to remind yourself of the rules pretty simple uh, the dice um, are, are solid as well uh, the artwork is clearly laid out on the dice my only concern with the dice is that eventually sort of things will will peel the art will peel off the dice looks like they're just sort of silk screened on the dice of course uh, i didn't show it in the game but it comes with uh, another set of dice as well um, and so overall uh, the aesthetic value for a, a game of this nature a small box game is quite good and i'll give it a b plus uh, the replayability, I think this is one of the areas where this game really shines, and, I, and I'm glad that this is the area because I want to have a few of these games in my collection, and I want to have a few games where I can go to, or these are good games to teach people. Uh, the, the nice thing about this game in particular is, and I'll put this the link to this in the, uh, in the comments section in the show notes today, is that there is a, a print and play version of this 
where as long as you have someone who has uh, the dice for the game, uh, you can actually play this virtually, which is appealing, especially in, <laughs> in, in the reality today where it's hard to get together with extended family or gaming groups as much as we would like. I'm actually thinking of getting uh, some friends and some people at our church together to uh, have a games night. And so as long as someone has a set of dice, um, really it says one to six players, but it could be one to 600 players uh, if you wanted to. Um, and so that, that adds to the replayability. I think something that all ages can grab onto and the fact that it does include these dice uh, we didn't show it but it adds in the, in the blue version of the game it adds sort of lakes and rivers sort of going through your network and different ways of scoring so it adds an ele extra element so uh, i don't think this game will come stale anytime soon it's one that can be played even two three times in one sitting because uh, you know, I was thinking a little more than maybe I should have been, but you can rip through a game in, in 15 minutes. And so the replayability on this is really high. I'll give it an A, and that leads to, to the game flow and the game length. It says on the box 30 minutes, and there's no reason this game can't take 30 minutes unless everyone is overthinking like I was, I was having a moment of analysis paralysis there in the tutorial. Uh, but because it's simultaneous action, it's not one person taking a turn and it goes to next. The dice are rolled and everyone, this is why whether it's one or six or 60 people playing online, uh, you can still play this game in, in a half hour, give or take, um, because everybody's doing their turn simultaneously. As long as everybody is uh, thinking on their toes and not waiting too long to take their turns, you can even use a sand timer and add a time limit if you're really concerned about that. Um, but the game and the flow is good too. I mean, because it's simultaneous action, uh, the length seems appropriate. I wouldn't want a game like this to be an hour or two hours. I'd rather play two or three games of this than rather be one sort of 14, 15 round epic. So seven rounds sort of feels about right. And uh, I give the, uh, the game length and the game flow a high score as well. I'll give it an A. Let's talk about the ease of play. It says on the box, uh, eight years old plus. And I think that's about right. I mean, you might even get younger kids uh, that can figure this out as long as they're able to draw somewhat. I mean, as you saw, I'm not the most artistic person in the world. Uh, but really, it's just drawing those simple things on your board. That's the nice thing about playing this online is uh, you don't have to do any of the drawing. You just sort of plug and turn where you want to put things. Um, but the only trouble with the ease of play is, again, I mentioned earlier, um, it's really being careful um, with the, the direction of the dice. Some of the dice are, you can twist them and turn them, but you want to make sure it's in the right spot. Uh, making sure you're connecting your roads to roads, your railroads to railroads. Um, so the rules are pretty easy to catch on to, and I think it's a rather easy game to pick up. There's a couple little finicky rules, especially when you get into the expansions. Um, but I think the ease of play, I would give an A- minus for this. As far as tactics and strategy... Uh, it's not the most strategic game. It's it's really more you're just focusing on word, what you're doing. There's not a lot of player interaction without the course of the game. And uh, that's one thing. I, it would be nice if there was a bit more interaction between uh, the players. That being said, there are some strategic choices that need to be made. As you saw, even, even as I was thinking things through, you kind of want to keep an eye on all the possible dice that could be rolled and you're trying to strategize when should I use my special so I only have three of them to use you don't want to use them all too early and get stuck uh, how how many open roads and railroad tracks should I keep and how many gaps do I want to leave to fill at the end of the game because it comes down to that usually it comes down to that seventh round and whether or not you get what you need so there is some luck but you can mitigate the luck by the strategic choices you make um it's not the most strategic game, but again, for a simple sort of roll and write game, there are some interesting choices to make here, and I'll give the tactics and strategy a B. At the end of the day, uh, this is one of my favorite roll and write games. It's one I'll be keeping in my collection. It's one I'll be playing both around the table. I'll be playing online and be playing virtually as well. Uh, might be one you want to think on picking up. Remember, you've got the blue box option I've shown here or the red box option. Uh, if you can get your hands on Railroad Inc., I highly recommend it. Uh, for all ages, I'll give it a B+. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you once again for joining me here at TripAdvisor on a Tabletop Tuesday. Hope you've enjoyed this video. You can like it, you can share it, you can subscribe to the channel and get notified if you click the notification bell whenever I release a new Tabletop Tuesday video. As well, I release a Theology Thursday conversations as well as Film Friday movie reviews. So whatever game is hitting your table tonight or this week, I hope you have an enjoyable time. Game on. Thank you.